I'm Joe Pollack, and I'm a professor of marine biology at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. My research group studies the biology of sponges on coral reefs. Now, when I say sponges, you probably think of something you find in your kitchen, like these. Or maybe you think of this, but that's not what I mean. This is what I mean, a giant barrel sponge on a coral reef in the Bahamas. And it's only one of hundreds of species found on Caribbean reefs. Sponges are often very abundant and come in all shapes, sizes, and sometimes brilliant colors. It may surprise you that sponges are animals and they eat by filtering tiny particles out of seawater. Here we've released some green dye next to a barrel sponge to show you how rapidly it can filter water through its body. And this is where the science starts, because one group of researchers a few years ago measured the growth of sponges at two depths on the same reef. In deep water, where there were more food particles, they observed that the sponges were larger and grew faster than sponges in shallow water. They concluded that food is the more important thing controlling sponge abundance on the reef. Now, my research group had been working on the very same reef, and we observed that angelfishes were eating some species of sponges. Our conclusion was that predation is the more important thing controlling sponge abundance. So, which was it? Predation, food, or both? In science, this is called having multiple working hypotheses. And to test them, we attached pieces of sponge to the reef that were outside and inside of cages that would prevent angelfishes from eating them. We did this experiment in both shallow water and in deep water, where the sponges had more food. After one year, we collected the sponges and reweighed them to see how much they grew. Let's look at a bar graph that shows the percentage growth of the sponge pieces. You can see that when protected by cages from hungry angelfishes, sponge pieces grew a lot more than pieces that were not caged. So predation is important. But surprisingly, sponge pieces that were exposed to higher amounts of food did not grow faster. This means that there is already plenty of food in shallow water, and food is not an important factor affecting sponge abundance. This research is important in explaining why reefs that lack angelfishes because of overfishing have sponges that are overgrowing and killing their corals. So saving coral reefs also depends on saving fishes that eat sponges.